Gigabyte's X570 Gaming X board is pretty weird. On the one hand, it's clearly quite a cheap board. It's got a brown and not black PCB. It's got relatively minimal IO, PCIe lanes and stuff like that. And even the lower end Realtek ALC AA7 codec, rather than the more standard 1220 that we see on a lot of boards. But it also boasts a 10 plus two phase VRM power design. And so certainly a, a high end option on the, the power design, but cheap on everything else. This this is a pretty weird combo, especially for a board that costs around 180 pounds. Now this isn't Gigabyte's fault. AMD are asking their motherboard partners to be able to support up to 16 core CPUs on the same platform that they support four core APUs and also support PCIe Gen 4 as well. Those factors culminate in a motherboard that has a premium X470 price tag, but feels like a £50 eBay special B350. So for your near £200, this better be able to support any CPU you can throw at it. Now sadly, my 3900X has been whisked away from me as soon as I finish my review, and while it will be back shortly, the only chip that I have available right now is the 3600X, which draws about 95 watts compared to the 3900X's 140. Now that's not too too much of a difference and it does give you a bit of an insight into how well the board handles stuff and it's pretty obvious this is a fairly beefy VRM setup. The VRMs, or at least the chokes anyway, didn't reach more than about 40 degrees Celsius under full load which was drawing that full 95 watts so I'm pretty happy that even the, the 12 or 16 core options would work in this just fine with very little problems. BIOS wise it's actually the older style with no easy mode. It still does have all of the options you would expect including overclocking although it does still have all of the overclocking split into separate uh, frequency, memory and voltage settings which I would really like to see a, a single sub menu at least for a basic overclock stuff like your core multiplier, your core voltage and your XMP profile all in one place but either way that is still available to the rest of the board is kind of, well, sparse. Uh, you do actually have up to five RGB headers if you really needed that many. You also have two M.2 slots, which is great to see. The top one does come with a heatsink and goes directly to the CPU, whereas the bottom one goes through the chipset. Speaking of the chipset, there is a fan on here, as we've come to expect with X570 motherboards, and the fan actually doesn't turn on for the vast majority of your use, uh, usage with the board. And even when it does, you can actually now change fan profiles for this fan so that it can be either as quiet or as efficient as you want it to be. Rear I.O. wise is what you'd expect from a budget motherboard. It does actually have a built-in I.O. shield which is great to see but the connections are a little bit few and far between. For an inexplicable reason you have separated PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. Again don't know why. You do have HDMI if you want to use this with an APU like I actually have and then you've got six USB ports, gigabit ethernet and some audio outputs although it's the more basic just line in, line out, and microphone in, rather than the full 7.1 setup. So what's the verdict here? Well, I'm, I'm definitely confused, because at the time of filming, you can go out and buy an X470 Gaming 5 board, which is technically last generation, but still has a pretty decent 8 plus 3 phase VRM setup, which should be able to handle any chip you throw at it, and has BIOS updates available, so that the new chips will work with it. The other thing to mention is that that board has really a much better set of I.O. and connectivity, uh, you have Wi-Fi built in, you have full 7.1 audio with the better 1220 codec, and the only thing that you'd be losing going with X470 over X570 is potential compatibility, you might have to update the BIOS first, and PCIe Gen 4 support, which if you're on a budget, you're likely not going to be after anyway. So, should you buy one of these motherboards, and would I put one in my rig myself? I think the short answer here is probably not. Unless you're desperate for PCIe Gen 4 support and can't afford a, a bit of a higher end X570 board, then I really don't see much of a use case for this board when X470 boards are currently still plentiful and readily available, and especially with them now coming with BIOS updates that will make third gen Ryzen immediately work with this, uh, generally uh, I'm having a hard time finding a use case. Now with that said, those are my thoughts, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is there a use case that I'm missing for this board? Is there something that you uh, think I've missed or generally just have a, an opinion on it? I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. 
You can also pick up this board using the link in the description down below or just check out pricing when and where you watch this because it can vary. It's a global Amazon link so hopefully you can find out that information. If you want to see more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, stuff like motherboard reviews, CPU, graphics card reviews, systems, laptops, monitors, keyboards, mice and just a whole load of other stuff, then feel free to hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon. Like I said, they're every Monday, Wednesday and Friday so stay tuned for more. Otherwise, you can check out the links in the description down below to support the channel. There's Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them. You can also check out the merch link for really awesome t-shirts like this one or hoodies or uh, stickers and a load of other stuff. Um, it's a tech collage one, very happy with how it turned out so feel free to go take a look at that. You can also take a look at the Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like t-shirts like this one uh, and support me directly or you can also check out private internet access which is a great anti VPN or Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities too. You can also check out some other videos over there if you want to keep watching. You can check out the uh, X570 Master Board if you want to see uh, a higher end X570 board as well. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.